In this lesson, we're going to discuss what JavaScript is, and more importantly, what it isn't. Now, JavaScript is the world's most widely used programming language. You'll find it in billions of web pages, so in that respect, it's been a huge success that no one could have anticipated. And that certainly includes Brandon Icke, who defined the language within a matter of months. It was intentionally kept simple and allowed developers to manipulate the HTML page and the browser windows. It was originally named Mocha, which was a coffee-inspired name because at the time, Sun's new Java programming language was all the rage and it was pronounced as being the messiah of the IT world. It then became LiveScript. And after a few months, the name JavaScript came along. Now, this was actually because of a fairly clunky branding deal made between Netscape and Sun. And it finally shipped with Netscape Navigator 2 at the end of 1995. Now, meanwhile, over at Microsoft, the company were rapidly developing their own web browser. And it was an attempt to stop Netscape making dominant inroads into their desktop territory. Now, they actually reverse engineered JavaScript and copied it exactly, even the bugs. But to avoid any trademark issues, they called it JScript rather than JavaScript and it shipped with Internet Explorer 3 in August 1996. Now, as I said, JScript and JavaScript are absolutely identical. So if you ever see one written in preference to the other, don't worry about it. You should also note that IE supports VBScript, which can do many of the same things, but it never really took off because no other browser supported it. Now, in November 1996, JavaScript was submitted to ECMA International for consideration as an industry standard. And it's certainly been one since 1997. Now, strictly speaking, this course should be renamed an introduction to ECMAScript, but absolutely nobody calls it that. The JavaScript name has stuck. Now, despite being one of the most successful programming languages ever devised, JavaScript is probably the most misunderstood. Now, the first thing to understand JavaScript is not Java. There are a number of superficial syntactical similarities, but they are not related in any way whatsoever. So if you're taking this course to learn Java, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. Now that said, JavaScript is a far more useful skill to know, so please persevere with it. But if you're ever confused, this is the best quote I've heard to explain the difference. Java is to JavaScript as ham is to hamster. Now, the script part of the name also gives the impression that JavaScript is some type of cut down, macro like, or less capable version of Java. It's not. If anything, some of the more popular JavaScript features are finding their way into other languages such as Java and C. Sharp. Now, a lot of people think that JavaScript is for browsers only, and that's not the case. Certainly, you can use it on the server, and we've seen that in Node.js. But also, ActionScript, which is used in Flash, is based on JavaScript. PDF files can have JavaScript embedded into them. Desktop widgets on Microsoft Windows and Apple's Mac OS also use JavaScript. OpenOffice provides JavaScript support. HP's WebOS applications are written in JavaScript. And in Windows 8, JavaScript is a first-class programming language. You can write desktop applications using JavaScript. Now, you'll often hear other developers complain that JavaScript isn't a proper language and doesn't take an object-orientated approach. It's total rubbish. Now, JavaScript is prototypal rather than class-based. You don't really need to understand what that means just yet, but it can confuse developers who have come from other languages. But once you get your head around the concepts, it's a very powerful and elegant language. JavaScript lets you write code in many different ways. You can even create new commands which look just like native JavaScript functions. Now, JavaScript is a recognized international standard. The language itself is very stable. It has quirks like any other language, but it's actually very consistent across browsers and other platforms. But that's not necessarily the case for browsers. They all have differences and quirks which cause development headaches. Now, it's important to note that's not actually a fault with the language itself, but the browser objects that you manipulate using JavaScript. 
Now, fortunately, JavaScript can help you get around browser inconsistencies. And that's exactly what many of the more popular libraries do. A library such as jQuery, Prototype or Mootools fills in all the gaps left within some browser APIs. So what is JavaScript? Well, first and foremost, it's a computer programming language. It's been implemented in almost every browser, so it allows you to add interactivity within your web pages. So what do we mean by interactivity? Well, it can react to user actions such as clicking a mouse button or pressing a key on the keyboard, submitting a form, scrolling the page, resizing the window, or literally any other event. Now it can take that input, it can process it in some way, and it can store it locally or pass it back to the server. And finally, it can display output. For example, we can expand and contract the height of a widget or change the text. Now a typical action you'll see are form validators. And these check values before they're submitted back to the server. So for example, you might be requesting an email address. A JavaScript program could run when the user changes that input value. It would check that a valid email has been entered and it doesn't contain characters such as spaces. It could then show an error or perhaps colour the input box in red if there's a problem. So let's look at a very basic program which displays an alert box with a message. Let's run the code. And there we go. Isn't that amazing? I expect you're all very excited now. Now, dabbling with JavaScript was an exercise in frustration during the latter half of the 1990s. The documentation wasn't particularly great and few developers really understood the language. But the biggest problem, without a doubt, was cross-browser compatibility. The two most popular browsers, which were Microsoft's Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator, were actively competing against each other. And they often implemented different ways of doing the same thing. So, for example, something as simple as moving an element from one place on the page to another place required you to check which browser was being used and have two different sets of code to handle that operation. It was an absolute mess and developers were caught in the crossfire. Now it's important to note that this wasn't a fault with JavaScript itself, but the browser objects and the application programming interfaces. But developers equated that with the JavaScript language and generally did their best to avoid it. Now the demise of Netscape and the rise of web standards did ease the situation, but JavaScript still had a bit of a bad name and was rarely used for anything more than form validation. Now all that changed in 2005 with the rise of Ajax. Now you should note that Ajax isn't actually a technology in itself. It stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML and was actually a technique implemented by Microsoft in Internet Explorer 5 back in 1999. It allowed web pages to send messages to a server and receive a response without doing a complete page refresh. It's basically what powers applications such as Google Maps, Gmail, and much of Facebook today. In fact, any modern interactive web application is likely to be using Ajax. So as developers started creating complex client-side applications, they actually began to realize that JavaScript was quite cool. The language has been underestimated and many new techniques evolved rapidly. And today we have the rise of HTML5, which has made JavaScript a first-class language. Developers like it, they use it, and they want to learn more about it. And that's why you're viewing this video today.